Manchester United have reached an agreement with Christian Eriksen. He has agreed to be a Manchester United player, confirmed here by the brilliant David Ornstein that Christian Eriksen has verbally agreed to join Manchester United as a free agent. The playmaker has communicated his desire to play for United and accepted a three-year deal. The contract needs to be finalised and, of course, the medical complete. But United will sign Christian Eriksen. He will be a Manchester United player. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Let's go. Ericsson will be a Manchester United player, medical pending. Of course, he's got to sign the thing, but he's agreed to the terms, a three-year deal. Brentford told no, Leicester told no, Newcastle told no. Spurs, of course, pulled out of this situation. It has been believed for a number of weeks now that it would be, Christian Eriksen would become a Manchester United player. That is now done. That is now finalised. That is now over the line. He is a will be a Manchester United player. I want your thoughts and I want your feelings. We're going to open up the phone lines for you to have your say. And look, I told people the other day, talk about him rejecting us. It was a lie. People said that he, United couldn't pull it off. They wouldn't be able to bring him in. All of it, nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Man United always had a chance with his signing. Manchester United always had an opportunity to bring him in and they've gone and they've done it and they've delivered. And that's the second player today that's now confirmed you know yes barring some some medicals and everything else but he will be without a shadow of a doubt a Manchester United player the medicals I know he's obviously had these issues but it will be a formality now um, as it were I want your thoughts and I want your feelings I mean the, the, the interesting thing about this is um, it's 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 kind of interesting because Obviously, you're you're we're in this we're in this situation whereby, and I want to make sure I say this in the in in the right way. Really, we're, we're kind of in this situation where people thought that he was going to say no to us. People were laughing at Manchester United. People were criticizing Manchester United, and they just weren't reading the news articles, especially from outside the UK. Uh, I'm just sharing this news across some social media platforms here. Uh, remember, we are sponsored, as you know, by the brilliant people at Private Internet Access. Feel free to right now um sign up three months free you can get that done you've got an 80 day cancellation policy within it within it as well but sign up free now using the link in our description below and the qr code that you can see on the screen um when are when are oh, sorry when are you man united fan sorry when are when you are a Man United fan, then you will probably understand why having Ericsson is a blessing. Listen, Ericsson to Manchester United is a phenomenal piece of business without a shadow of a doubt. A phenomenal piece of business for Manchester United. I don't think that can be ignored. I don't think you can get away from that. And at the end of the day, I think a lot of people owe Man United an apology on this one because the banter about him being rejecting Manchester United was just absolutely ridiculous. It was just ridiculous. It was ridiculous that nobody was listening. You're not laughing now. A great signing for Manchester United. He was a great servant for Spurs for a long time. I wish him all the very best is what Jerome has got to say here. He, he, he wasn't. Look, is he is he this, this marquee? million, you know, sort of multi-million pound signing that's going to transform our team and make us Premier League winners? No, I don't think that that's the case here. But it's a different type of signing. It's an important type of signing. And I'm glad, I'm very, very glad as a Man United fan that is over the line. Spurs inquired and then walked away. Never followed up. We chose not to make an actual offer. Alan, this is true, but I think Spurs decided to not make an offer because they knew what was going to happen. And that was that he was going to pick Manchester United. Uh, we are coming to life at last, Terry. It's not about coming to life at last. It was about being patient. Man United's regime have been here six and a half, seven weeks. That's two signings now. 
Frankie de Jong could happen this week as well. Then we move on to Lissandro Martinez. As I told you all last week, United expect three signings before they go on preseason tour. That's essentially two done. Lissandro Martinez will conclude this week, most people believe. Always going to happen. Was always going to be the case. And now we motor on forward from this position. Even as a Liverpool fan, you can't hate Ericsson, especially after what had happened and what he's been through. I'm so happy he's back at a top club. Uh, Two two done, two to go is what's being said there. Yeah, and I think that, listen, I think that United could sign up to five people this summer. Without a shadow of a doubt, uh, I think up to five people could come in for Manchester United. I don't think you can kind of get away um, from that. As, as even as, just as a theory there, but let's go for a little bit more what David Ornstein has got to say because I think there's been a few a few tweets that have come out about this. Um, uh, let me just get this out here. So this is what was being said. Uh, Ericsson has of course verbally agreed in principle to join Manchester United. He's set to sign a three year deal. The process of drafting up contracts now has started, and that's um, and if that's finalised, Ericsson would need to come through a medical test. No problems are expected um, on that front, but given the history, it's it's a significant hurdle. So I just, of course, we have to get through those those elements there. But he is going to be um, a, a Manchester United player, pending anything falling through. And at the same time today. It's just been formally announced uh, by Fabrizio that Frank Kessay now joins Barca officially. So he is now officially a, a, a player of Barcelona. That is done. That is dusted. Uh, and that there is over the line. Um, so there we go. There we have it. There we have it. Um, bear with me a second here. Just searching for a little thing. Um There we go. One sec, my people. I'm just sharing something. <laughs> and I've got to do it all by myself. Uh, let's have a look at some more of your comments here. Eric's, Ericsson wanted Spurs. We just didn't bid. Went a different way. Uh, he, he wanted Man United, my friend. He wanted Manchester United. Um, let's have a little look here. Terry gassed about one signing. I'm not gassed about one signing. I'm happy about the fact that we've pulled off a signing of a very good free transfer, a very talented football player that will most certainly help elevate and improve my football team. So, of course, I'm excited, but I want your thoughts and I want your uh, views on this, people. That's far more important to me than my very own opinion. I want to know where where, where you stand on this uh, is what I think is key. Um. He will be one of your best midfielders until you get De Jong, but good business. Well, there'll still be a very good uh, midfielder. Man says we need young and smart players for a rebuild. Ronaldo is old and we don't have don't want to look like a flip. Sorry, but he don't want to look like a flop to be criticized next season if he becomes weak. M- maybe. Maybe. I kind of get where you're coming from with that. Ericsson is still one of the best playmakers in the league. Uh, for a free, you cannot knock the signing, of course. And, the, and the, I haven't seen the salary. The salary is probably going to be pretty high. Free transfers always get higher salaries because you're not paying that transfer fee. It's one of the reasons why net spend uh, is a fallacy in the way that it's used by newspapers. People are telling me to track Fabrizio's tweet. Fabrizio has just obviously shared the news about Christian Ericsson. Um, as well. Uh, KJ is going to come on and join me now. I'm going to open up the lines um, to give you guys a chance to have your say. I'm going to post the link in the live comment section now. If you want to phone in, please get that done. Um, especially Man United fans that said we weren't going to do anything, especially Manchester United fans who said that it wasn't going to happen. I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you now. I want to know what the Fungus fans have got to say as well about this deal. I'm sure they've got something to moan about. Uh, But the majority of United fans seemingly happy with this. I'm just going to pin that live comment up uh, on the screen there. KJ's here with me. What are you saying, my guy? Wonderful. Wonderful pieces of news right now. Literally, we just finished a meeting. All right, people, big big things in store for the football terrorists. Just get that. Let that be known right now. And big things in store. We just finished a meeting. I'm off doing my thing. I see my phone. David Ornstein, the GOAT of the transfer window this summer. He's been the best one. I think the best journalist this summer. So hats off to him. Ericsson, boom. 
he was verbally agreed to join. I'm here calling Terry. I was like, where is this man? He better be setting up a live stream now, fam. You know what I mean? I'm doing my job, telling him to get ready for this because he needs to get live. Very good signing for Man United. This is just this is just beautiful with everything that's going on with the whole Cristiano Ronaldo, Frankie De Young, all these things going on. This news today is is wonderful to hear because people have been moaning way too much for my liking. I've been telling everyone to take time, take your time, people. Relax a little bit. Allow Man United's new structure to to show if they're good or bad. Right now, we don't know, like really and truly. Let them have that chance to show us what they are. And right now, they're slowly showing us that, okay, there might be something there. Obviously, it's the first transfer window. He's only signing number two because Malasia should be announced today. He's doing his medicals already. So it's not to say we're back. It's not to say that this is the the, the new structure is going to work completely. But for everyone who's been saying, ah, oh, these guys are crap. These guys ain't doing any business. These guys can't do anything. Can't be smart. We've just made a smart signing. You know and, what and I mean? It, and, it, and, it, just, and, it, and it disproves a big myth because the big myth was United can't work on more than one transfer at once. Well, how's that possible where we're, when we're, we're, we're signing Ericsson, Malassia is done, Alessandro Martinez is getting very, very close and we're still negotiating on De Jong. So all the fungus Man United fans, all the scaremongers, if you watch and listen or follow those people, you're an idiot. You're an idiot because they've been lying to you all summer. They've been lying to you all summer. Literally. And it's, I, and it's very good business. It's very good business. No yeah, doubt. I literally said three little bird settings. You know what I mean? Like, if you know that song by Bob Marley, you know what I'm saying. Just relax, man. Don't worry about a thing, fam, because it's going to be good. But also, Terry, I need to say one thing as well. Yo, Benjamin Jacobs, my brother. Yo, come <laughs> chat to us. Come <laughs> chat to us nicely, my friend. Come chat to us nicely. Listen, I don't normally call out our wonderful journalists that come on our show, but Ben's epic rant last week just made me just just put a place. I put a place in my heart in there. Just like, all right, cool. Let me save that. You know what I mean? Let me remember that. So when this moment comes, I can say to him, Benjamin, my brother, my guy, yo, Tuesday when you're on, Tuesday or Wednesday when you're on, Chat to Terry nicely, in it. Chat to us nicely. The, the thing with it is, listen, listen. What, what I would say about all these things is very simple. My view on Ericsson, and I'll reveal this now. One, there are other journalists we speak to that said it's on, that it's progressive, moving forward. And you know, I said to you privately, like I believe this still could happen. David Ornstein doesn't tweet about transfers unless they're highly likely to happen. So when he tweeted two and a half weeks ago that. United, he, he did two tweets in a week about Man United looking at this guy or tweets connected to his stories. I said to KJ, it's going to happen because Ornstein has got this success rate, which is unbelievable. He almost, he's not a tapping merchant. He just, he has built such a reputation. He doesn't, he, he, could, he doesn't need to start talking about these transfers in the early stages when the, when the ebb and the flow is high. He comes in right at the last minute, knowing everything everyone else knows and says, I think this is going to happen now. And he's earned that right through being that credible, which is why I couldn't understand the frustration. I couldn't understand the, sort of the way people were panicking. And listen, so many journalists wrote, so just, just go back and look back at two weeks ago, all the rejection claims. United rejected by this guy, that guy. All a load of nonsense. And look, we've got a lot of work to do. There's a long way for Man United to go back. But Man United fans, I'm going to say this now. You've been lied to by United content creators all summer. You've been lied to by the Fungus fans online. Even some journalists have been so downbeat about what we can do. Man United still have pull. Man United still can attract people. And a large part of that is Eric Ten Hag joining the club. But... He is Man United's manager. So we're utilising his skill. It's a bit like saying, oh, you know, Man City only won the league because they've got Pep. Well, at least they're manager, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's the way yeah, it yeah. is. Man United are the only club where we get slandered and attacked for people that belong to us as a football club helping us as a football club. It's kind of weird. Like, it's kind of weird yeah, to me. Yeah, but I remember that game really against... Really um... Go on. So you, you want to ask me a question? No, no, go for it. Keep, keep, no, no, yeah, I remember that game against Arsenal um, back when we had Jose, we beat them 3-1 away and it was, oh, you only won because you had the herring goal. And it's like, well, yeah, like he, he's our goalkeeper. Like what do you expect him to do? Not do his job. So yeah, like I'm I'm, I'm happy with the signing. Hopefully again, going forward, we can see start to see more signings come through the door and hopefully United fans can sign in. Put, put the pressure on, yes. Demand the standards to be raised and get these players in, yes, but allow these new people Ten Hag, Murta, Arnold, 
give them a chance to show if they're good or bad or um, good or bad. Just li- give them that, and then you'll be right in your assessment in a uh, after transfer window after January and the next summer transfer yeah. window. Your your judgments will be proven uh, to be correct. So just take time, man. But yeah, good signing and looking forward to hopefully getting a few more uh, down the line as well. Top man. Listen, KJ, cheer for jumping on, bro. We'll chat again soon. Thank you very much, my guy. Tom Little coming on in a moment. But I'm going to do a little I'm gonna do a little gift for you guys today because I'm in a good mood. If you get us past 500 likes while we're live, I will give 10 brand new memberships out to the viewers. 10 new people will get given memberships live on the air if we hit that 500 like mark. If we hit 1,000 likes on this video while we're live, I will gift 20 memberships out. So... Get hitting that like button. We're going to do that on all shows moving forward for a while. We hit certain numbers of likes. We'll gift out these memberships to you all. So make sure you're doing it. Tom Little's here, Liverpool fan, Man United, signed Ericsson. What are you saying, my friend? That's a really sm- I'm a little bit concerned. It's a really smart sign in that. That is a really smart. That's not my- that's not what Manchester United do. Manchester United don't make smart signings. You just go and give 300 k a week to finish players. This this isn't right. It's such it's actually a really smart sign and in the sense that the you'll you'll obviously got a style of play that you're gonna to need to implement. And I think most United fans aren't really as bothered about what's gonna happen next season in terms of challenging for the major honours as just trying to get a style of play and trying to figure out where you're going under Eric Ten Hag. So getting a player who understands that Ten Hag style of play can drop into that Ten Hag style of play effortlessly. He's experienced, he's played in the league before, he was fantastic at Brentford last year. So the concerns about what might happen after being out the league, they, they're they not there. He's obviously still got it in this league. He's an experienced head to help. The the development since this next phase, and obviously there's the whole carry on about Ronaldo and what's gone on there. But I think what you've got to appreciate is this is a really, if you get Ericsson, if you get Frankie De Jong in, like you look set to do, that's your midfield set, in my opinion. You know, Ericsson, De Jong, Bruno, and then you've got Fred and McTominay, who, let's be honest, they're not going anywhere. So so they're just there as backups. But you've got a solid cause that midfield. Ericsson's just a really, really good pickup. And it's a bit annoying because I did want him to stay at Brentford, so you couldn't have him. Because it, it, it's annoying. It's annoying that Ten Hag's getting his players because you just can act, if, it, if this carries on, you just can really create something. You just can really create something because Ten Hag's a brilliant manager. And he's got a brilliant style of play. And if he can get it implemented, top four next year. Listen, I, I think Man United, I've said it, you know me, I've been consistent this whole time. I think Man United can make the top four. We've got a better squad than people already understand. Two signings in. If we can pull off Lissandro this week, and listen, Arsenal have got a very good chance of getting that deal done. And you bring in De Jong. I know that the, 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 the Ronaldo thing is frying people's heads out of, of loop. I'm not worried about Ronaldo. At the end of next season, he's also not going to be here. So you're in this situation where the club may need to go, right, well, who are we going to... Is there going to be an emergence of a striker in the next 12 months who no one knows about now? Probably not. Like, very, very rarely does it happen when you get... Like when Haaland kind of came through, that happens every once every four or five, six years. You get a player that you didn't expect to be brilliant that is. So there's obviously targets out there for next year. Do we move to one of them now? Or do we say, do you know what? Let's save £26 million by letting Ronaldo go and let's invest that in another centre-back. Let's, let's invest that in another midfielder. We've got Martial, Rashford, Bruno that can play a false nine position. We've got some academy. You know, we, we'll be short in that area, but we'll tackle that next year. This is year one of a rebuild. And mm-hmm. look, I just think people need to uh, re- relax a little bit in relation to this. They really, really do. But of yes. course... No, Man United fans didn't want to relax. Man United fans wanted to pretend to be outraged. They were every day. Literally, I saw I saw a Man United fan, a big Man United fan, tweet earlier on today. Man United summers in chaos. We've just signed Malassia and Christian Eriksen for thirteen million pound in its entirety, and are closing in on one of the best up and coming centre backs in the world in Lissandro Martinez. And suddenly we're in a mess. The, the, mm-hmm. the, the, the fake outrage is out is outrageous. Th- this is the thing. Like you, you've obviously everyone can see you've got so many issue areas that you've got to address, striker, your right wing, because you haven't got a right winger, you play Sancho on the left, you know, I still think you need a better right back than what you've got, and you'll eventually have to address your goalkeeper, but you're not going to do that all in one window with the type of player that Ten Hag wants. This is the issue, this is the issue with with what you need to do. Ten Hag is wanting players that fit his system, 
this isn't a situation where you just go out and buy anyone who is world-class. You need certain types of players. So if you've got to wait a year to get that certain type of player, you wait a year. Because what we've we done it with Van Dijk and Alisson. Um, City have done it before. The top clubs do it because you need a certain type of player. If Ronaldo was to go this summer, I wouldn't be shocked if he didn't buy anyone and he's just used what you had in the squad because he's not going to go out and spend £50 million on someone who doesn't fit his system. He's clearly got something that he wants to implement and he's not going to set that back by bringing in a big name who, yes, he's going to sell me X amount of shirts, but on the pitch, there isn't that impact. So... Yes, you need a striker, but the striker market is horrific this window. It is horrific. The two best strikers went in like the first two weeks in Haaland and Nunes. Nunes was the one used with after. Obviously, he's gone. Ten Hag doesn't want anyone else that's currently available. So why would he go out and buy someone he doesn't want? This is mm. the thing. If if you want this Ten Hag project to work, you have to give him the trust in the transfer market. You have to let him decide who he wants. Because at the end of the day, he's the one that's got to use them. He's the one that's got to get a tune out of them. Yeah. So if if he's the one making the decisions, at least it's just only on him if it goes wrong. And there's only one point of blame. So I just, yeah. I think that's what you got to do. Mate, I, look, I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. And I think United fans, have all, all I've said all along, have just got to remain a little bit more relaxed than, than, than they have been. And I get the frustration. I get the concern. I get the worry, but stay relaxed. Tom, thanks for coming on, mate, and having your say. I appreciate it, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my Dizzy's here with us now. Big Man United Dizzy. fan. Eric is done. Malassia done. Give me your thoughts, my friends. Well, um, it is, there's, it, there's a lot going on, to be honest. I tuned out of everything football for a little while uh, when, when the season ended because I was just like, man... I'm not. I'm. I'm gonna take myself out of this for a while. But you've been doing the Lord's work. You've been keeping me updated and whatnot. And initially, when I first like you know start to 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 kind of dive back into what's going on as far as United goes, everybody was up in arms. So naturally, I was like, wait a minute. I've, I've missed. I must have missed something. So obviously, nat my natural response was, oh man, we're really this shit. Is really this bad? We ain't signing nobody. Everybody signing everybody. And then and then I realized, wait a minute. This windows have only been open for like two weeks or something like that. Yeah. Um, so, so, but as far as, as far as the signing goes, um, Malassia to me is music to my ears. Y you know how I feel about Luke Shaw. I'm, I'm, I'm done with everybody on the left. I'm so done with him. So bring me a replacement. I'll take anybody. I don't know much about him, but guess what? We're going to find out. Uh, Christian Eriksen, I think it's an interesting signing because it's kind of, um, like we was talking about at the end of last season, um, as far as trying to create a picture of how Ten Hag wants to play, because I, up until now we had no idea because we didn't know who was going to be here. So now we getting we're starting to get a better picture of who's going to be here, who isn't going to be here. So you can kind of start to get an idea of um, of how we're going to play. But yeah, I'm interested to see how it all works out. I think preseason is going to be a real, especially the first couple games to see like how actually like he's trying to implement his style. I think it's going to be really interesting, man. Mate, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And you know, look, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm only having a bit of a laugh when I call people out and say say certain things to people. I don't mean it uh, in a in a horrible way. But I think what's been frustrating for me as a Man United fan, kind of sitting back and and, and watching the transfer window unfold, has been people would see Jamie Jackson say, "Oh, I've I've heard that." Ericsson's rejected Man United. And I'm like, that's fair to, to like report on that because I report on all types of news. But it's how people would ignore the seven or eight very positive pieces of news about Ericsson to United and they'll focus and hone in on just the bad one, just the one that doesn't yeah. work well. And they've done it with Frankie De Jong. Like, every story that's positive, now nah, it can't be true. Every positive story that doesn't sound great, yeah, that's what's happening. That there, and it's almost a case of why don't you just slow down a little bit? Why don't you just relax a little bit? Why don't you just take your time with it, as as they say, and kind yeah. of go, and kind of go from there? That that's been my frustration with it, really. And look, did I know one hundred percent we were going to sign Christian Eriksen? No, but he got mm. my green tick, and I only put the green ticks out. I'll give you an example of my my green ticks. Yeah, did those transfers come to fruition? No, because the world changes. But only last night. Chelsea and, and and Spurs still tried to hijack the Gabriel Jesus deal. They made another inquiry. 
And mm. it's, no, there was no concrete links. No, there was. And they were, they were looking at him the whole time. Like, don't be bought in by your club's PR. You know, when your club says, oh, we're walking away because we've changed our minds, you mean the player said no. You know, it's, it's yes. I, don't, I, don't believe, I don't believe Tottenham walked away. I believe Tottenham knew two weeks ago he's picking Manchester United because the news about United now being a front runner came out 24 hours before Spurs said they were walking away. And that's not a dig at Spurs. Mm. That's how these things happen, you know. It, it's it's as simple as it's simple as that for me. But it's good business. Yeah. What, what do you want to see? Who else do you want? I mean, what's your thoughts on Martinez and, and De Jong? Do you see those deals happening? Um, well, um, I think I think um I think I think it will be good to get in as many of Ten Hogs men as possible because like we've been saying in all the streams that we've been in, the players that we have currently or the players that we had last season and the season before that, they're simply not good enough. So, um, and and I was watching a, um, a stream that you and, uh, I think Straight Facts that you and Leas was doing, where you was talking about, I like the approach of, if we can't get Ten Hogs man, we'll move on to a different key area where we can get Ten Hogs man and then we'll come back next season where we can where where we can get the number one because it doesn't make sense to oh um we can't get let's okay let's say martinez oh we can't get martinez let's just go and get nathan ake for example why well we need one in that position but it is it, just it's a it's a shirt on it's a it's a number on a shirt so may as well i I don't think so so i think if Tenna really wants him then i think we have to it, ha it just has to be done um i think yuri and timber i think the interesting thing with him is he didn't back himself to get in front of Harry Maguire or Lindelof or someone like that. To me, that's not United quality, so I'm not with it. So if Martinez backs himself, I'm 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 with it all the way. And who who's the other person you said? Um, Dion. The oh Frankie. Uh, funny funny thing you were saying about the about the fungus fans where we can't win for losing in this in the whole Dion saga where it's like if we sign him well he's a mercenary he didn't want to come anyway he's gonna flop you don't have a CDM so it's not gonna work. Um, and all the other excuses. But then if he doesn't sign, well, it's a massive catastrophe. United's fell off. They don't have the pulling power that they used to. <laughs> so so it's just, a, it's just a funny one to me, man. I think, to be honest, I really think, I think that De Jong will happen. And I have a sneaky suspicion that will beat Arsenal to Martinez. Could I be wrong? Of course. But I have a sneaky feeling that um, the, the Ten Hag uh, relationship and... Um, also, I think you was it. I think it was you and um, a, a journalist. I forget which one it was that was saying that Arsenal want him to play left back and we want him to play centre back. And Ten Hag's been training him to be a centre back since when they've been together. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, look, I think it's it's such a yeah, and, and that for me is where I think United have um, such a good opportunity here. It, it all depends where the player wants to go. I think Arsenal got a genuine chance of signing him. I think Arsenal were genuinely in for him. I think Arsenal. Mm. Um, are, are in a really good position. There is no shadow of a doubt around it. But I, I just, honestly, if I'm being really blunt and really honest, I just see Man United pulling that off. And then suddenly you're looking at a, a brilliant playmaker, a holder of possession in Ericsson, a very young... What I like about Malassia that's being ignored, he's young, but he's 22. He's not a 17 year old baby. He's, he's, he's old enough to play from day one. He's old enough to play a lot of football this season. We're signing... Yeah. Great profiles, great age, great, great age of players. And I know a lot of people have, again, you see, right for doing wrong. Uh, United are not so, like uh, the manager's palette for talent isn't high enough. He should be looking outside of the, the realm of um, the Ajax kind of mold. Well, no, because we've got a massive player power issue at the club. And what he Thanks. needs instantly is four or five players that buy into his, He's got four or five players that buy in. You're going to straight away get Bruno's going to be bought in because Bruno, he sanctioned Bruno's deal. Mm. You've got Donny that will be bought in instantly and straight away. He's done the sensible thing, I think, with Maguire by saying, I'm going to give you a chance. Why? Because Maguire is desperate to stay. So what's Maguire going to do? He's going to buy into his ideas. That doesn't mean Maguire and Donny and Bruno will be good enough in the long term for him at Man Absolutely. United. But it means you get a, you suddenly have got seven, eight players I've just named there very quickly that are going to work right. When a, when, a, when a group does it, the rest will follow suit. And it's a very smart thing that he's done. But listen, my guy, I appreciate you coming on, Dizzy, and having your say. And we'll chat again Ooh. soon, brother. Thank you very yes, much. Sir. Indeed. We're going to take some more of your calls. 
I want to know what a lot of you have got to say uh, in relation uh, to this transfer deal, if you're a rival or not. We've got uh, Liverpool fan Stan backstage that's going to come on. Um, we're going to get Steve on, who's backstage. But I want to speak to um, a Barcelona fan. Abdul's here. Man United make their second signing of the summer. What are you saying, Abs? You know, Terry, I'm actually Danish as well. I live in Denmark and Christian Eriksen, he, he's Danish. Terry, just me. Honestly, man, I'm scared. I'm scared for him. I, I don't want him to suffer another heart attack, Terry. <laughs> You know, you guys need to you need to be careful with him because I know like playing for United can be stressful. But not all all jokes aside, I think it's a it's a brilliant signing for you guys because he's he's a guy who knows he's a good footballer, bro. Like he knows how to he knows how to like uh, keep possession. He knows when to release the ball. He knows how to like he, he's actually like really creative, bro. He's really creative as well. And I think it's an interesting signing because I feel like it's going to be interesting how he's going to play in this in the same team as Bruno Fernandez. Because is is one of them going to play on the wings or is are they gonna be fighting for the same spot in the team? Or is he like a matter replacement? Is is for me it's very interesting to see what his actual role in the team is going to be because to be honest. Terry, based on form, I think he's your best attacking midfielder. That's my opinion. But of course, just as you said that you guys have just put Bruno Fernandes on a massive contract, a massive long-term contract. So it doesn't really make sense to me that he's going to come in and replace Bruno because you would have a guy on massive wages sitting on the bench on a, on a massive contract. So what, what, what are your thoughts? Like, how do you think he's going to be u- utilised Maybe yeah. on the wing or, or what? So, I, again, I don't think... Maybe maybe Ericsson will, maybe he won't. I, I think this. One thing about Bruno Fernandes, if you actually look at his heat maps where he conducts a lot of his play, he drifts out to the, to the wide areas. So, formations when you attack are not as important as when you defend. The formation when you're defending is key because it's around your structure and around stopping people from breaking through you. Not, not that United had that last season. When you attack, the fluidity is key, and that's what Ten Hag likes, a fluid attack. So I think the type of midfielders we're looking at are, are, are to complement Bruno Fernandes. Bruno Fernandes is not good at retaining possession in the same as other cr- big creators and, and midfield goal scorers. For instance, KDB loses the ball as often as Bruno Fernandes. Trent Alexander-Arnold loses the ball as often as Bruno Fernandes. Uh, an attacking right-sided at- attacker that both Chelsea... Um, Arsenal and Barcelona want to buy in Rafinha loses the ball on average seven times more per game than Bruno Fernandes. But what do City have and what do Liverpool have that complements players in their teams that lose the ball regularly is other midfield players who can maintain that possession. Equally, what those teams have is a work rate and, and, and a shape outside of possession, which enables them to win the ball back quickly. Bruno losing the ball was exasperating and the mag and the and the glass ma- a magnifying glass put over it because we couldn't ever get the ball back. It always led to counter attack, so it seems more dangerous. KDB loses the ball, Trent loses the ball. Their teams win the ball back inside 10, 20 seconds, so you don't care about it as much. And this is what I think he's trying to do. He wants better ball playing midfielders to support the likes of Bruno Fernandes. With the likes of Donny, with the likes of Ericsson, hopefully Frankie Dion that comes in. You can already see the kind of football he's looking to play a lot of possession-based football. You will then have one or two killers that he'll want in and around the edge of the box. They're there to put the ball in the back of the net. They're there to maybe play that final ball before, uh, you know, the final ball that will get the assist as an example. But everything else behind that is where the Ericsons and the De Jongs would come in. Now, interestingly as well, rotation is key. One of the biggest fundamental issues for Bruno Fernandes at Man United is he was overplayed, 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 and he burnt out. He looks exhausted. We need to be able to rotate him. And on top of that, if Ericsson comes in and is better, and if we're better without Bruno, your point you pulled on there, a player on big wages sitting on the bench, couldn't care less. You drop him, Bruno either improves or you sell him and move him on. There'll be people that would buy Bruno Fernandes. Like Bruno Fernandes has suitors out there. So for me, there's no downside to signing Ericsson. It makes the team better. It makes the squad better. There's better competition and better rotation. And for for a freebie, that didn't cost us very much. And he's going to be earning in and around the same as what Lingard was earning. It's a massive, massive improvement to me. So yeah, I'm re- I'm really happy I, with it. Myself. But Terry, I do, I do slightly disagree on one of the points that you made. 
I feel like a lot of the frustration in regards to Bruno losing possession, it isn't just him. He's still there. Um, one of the big frustrations about Bruno is that it's not just that he loses possession, but it's where he loses possession. And um, I feel like you, you compare his uh, possession loss stats uh, to KDB and other players, but the thing with KDB is KDB doesn't lose possession in front of his own box. That's the frustrating thing about but, Bruno. But that, he, but, that isn't, but that isn't where Bruno predominantly loses the ball. Now, yes, no, but but no, but yeah, Terry, yeah. Can, can I just no, land? No, can no, I just no, land? No, 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 you're not landing. You're not landing because that isn't where he loses the majority of the ball. No, but Terry, but that isn't, but that isn't, but that isn't where he loses the ball most of the time. He, he, of course, he's lost the ball on the edge of the box. But why? Pogba used to do that at Man United. Fred does that at Man United. McTominay does that at Manchester United. You're looking at a vast range of players and ability. Why do we have a habit? Why do lots of our players have a habit of losing the ball in dangerous places in the Man United team? Can I have that question again, sir? Why do, Pogba did it. Bruno d does it. McTominay does it. Fred does it. Why do we have a habit of losing the ball in those dangerous areas? We have a habit of doing it, um, Abdul, because we don't, we didn't, there's no structure to how we played. The team was so. That's true. Up. That's true. The, the point I'm making to you is this the vast majority of possession that Bruno Fernandez loses is from shots and, and trying to play key passes. And of course, sometimes, you know, it is a simple pass for him to play someone through on the pitch. And, and we've all sort of seen him like overpass it or make the wrong option. Of course, he does that. But all players do. Yes, he's lost the ball on one or two occasions in dangerous areas on the football pitch. But we're acting like that's where Br Bruno is doing that 17, 18 times a game. With more structure around him, better ball holding midfielders behind him, you will see an improvement, in my opinion. In it, it, I understand that. It's just that the reason why I brought it up, Terry, is because we, like, I don't know why, but it, like, it seems to happen relatively. Like, I can, of, of the top of my head, I can name four goals that you conceded because of Bruno losing possession, like, outside the box. Like, I get a like Xhaka's goal, it was because of Bruno's possession loss against Crystal Palace. Their Bruno's possession loss. I can't think of KDB losing the box in his own half that led to a goal being scored instantly. That's yeah, the, that's but, why I brought it up. But you're, but, but you're talking about a player that's losing the ball in a team that's structured well behind him. So you're, you're the variables are different. If if KDB was playing in the Man United team and was losing the balls at the same level he does at Man United, we concede more because our, our structure behind him isn't as good. It's like. That they, might be the case, yeah. That might be the case. It's a team sport. We, Bruno losing the ball isn't why Man United were conceding those goals. It was a part of the reason, but everything else in the build up to it's important. And like I said, you asked me a question: Why do I? How do I think this all works? It's clear how what he's trying to do is build a, a team that can hold on to possession. Then what you have is you have a, a couple of because there's players in the the Ajax team that weren't the greatest at keeping possession, but they were the killers up front. They were the guys that played the ball, the the the, the, the key pass, or they were the guys that put the ball in the back of the net. You know, and then the rest of the team is a system that creates those opportunities, which is very much the Pep Guardiola. Listen to Pep Guardiola talk. What does he say? I coach my, my players to get the ball to the edge of the box, and then it's up to them. That's literally how those systems work. Abdul, though, my friend, great call, great challenge. Chat to you soon, my friend. Thank you. Thank See you, you, bro. See you. Take care, thank man. You, thank you. Comment here from Mark Neighbour says, at Spurs, he was atrocious for two seasons. He is 31 in February. If any top six bought a player at this age, they would be ridiculed at Brentford, big fish in a small pond. Do people agree here with Mark Neighbour? Is this a bad piece of business for Manchester United? Next on, we're going to get Mo on the show in a minute. But before that, Steve is here with us. Steve N is here. What are you saying, Steve? Yo, it's how you. Thanks for having me on. Not a problem, mate. What do you want to say? Yeah, as I say, I'm happy with, um, we've got Ericsson signed up now. And I uh, hope we do get Dion. But um, one of the things I wanted to ask is like, how do you think... If we have got Ericsson and Dion, do you think they play in the team together as like a two? Or do you think we'd have Ericsson that's more on the, the bench and that? Or how, how do you see us playing? I think it depends on the formation. The, the, the word is that De Jong is going to kind of play as, a, sometimes he's going to play as like a, a sing, single pivot, like he does, like, like he did at Ajax and like he does um, in the Netherlands team with two mm -hmm. eights either side of him. And then I think it depends on who our opponents are. I think you can play with two eights that can both venture f f further forward when you're playing against the vast majority of the Premier League. But when we're playing against other teams in the top six, when you're playing against, you know, you're away at Leicester, you're away at Newcastle next season, you may veer for something a little different. So maybe that their games where Ericsson starts on the bench and you bring him on. I think the five sub rule 
is going to be really key next year because yeah. it gives you so many more str uh, strings to your bow. And that's the great thing about Ericsson, you know, to, <clears throat> to uh, Abdul's point before, and he made some good points around, you know, what does this mean for Bruno? Well, this is going to push Bruno to another level. It's going to make Bruno mm -hmm. need to be more consistent. It's going to give great backup and rotation for him. And there is yep. also games where we can utilize them both. And I've been talking about this for five, six years on socials. And again, it's something that most fans don't really think about. There's no such thing as your best team. It depends, you know, our best team for, for being at home against Burnley should be different to our best team going away to Chelsea. Does that make yeah. sense? And exactly. Man United need more variety in our squad. And I think Ericsson gives us that in abundance. Yeah, I agree with that. And the same with like Donny, it helped Donny because he's got another person he's got a rival to get into the team and he's got his old mate there Dion next to him. So we may see the bar of him this year. Absolutely. Listen, uh, Steve, really appreciate the call, mate. Thanks for coming on the terrace and having your say. I really appreciate it, mate. Right, cheers, Tony. Nice to you. Speak to you again. Yeah, cheers, Steve. Thank you very much indeed. Viewers, we've hit the 500 marks. We are going to gift out the 10. Oh, my other hand's on a mouse right now, so I can't put it up. 10 memberships are going to be gifted to you now. Uh, Terry has really sold out. I remember people used to come on this show and actually have an, an opinion and you wouldn't debate. You would debate it now. You just shut people down. Well, it depends on the person. I know Abdul quite well. Um, we have debates on the show every day. I'm the only, uh, can you show me all the other fan channels today that, that, that are covering this news that let you phoned in, that let you challenge? Just because I don't agree with your, I don't agree with all the opinions and I will cut in at times. And if people are saying things that I, I strongly disagree with, yes, Bruno's lost the ball at the edge of his box. But the vast majority of the, the average of 17 times per game he's losing the ball is up the other end. So what you're doing is a player that loses the ball 17 times in a game, one of which might be in his own half, two maybe, the rest are at the other opposite end of the pitch. Why are, we, why are we focusing on those two versus the rest and where they are? And what you then need behind it is a structure. That is called a debate, my friend. And sold out? Sold out to who? <laughs> I've always been like this. I don't know how long you've been watching the terrace, my friend. Let's just do this now. I'm going to gift out the 10 memberships um, to you all right now. I'm going to get that done and dusted. You'll see that come up on the screen. But make sure the like button is being smashed now, my people. Let's keep that going. That's done. I've the, the gift is coming through now to you all. You're going to see it come up momentarily. Momentarily, you're going to see this. You'll see it pop up on the screen, and then we'll read out who's actually got the gifts. I don't know. It does it randomly, you see. So 10 memberships have been gifted. And we'll see who it comes uh, through to. Make sure you are smashing that like button. So, Charlie White, uh, Patrick, what have we got here? Charlie White, Patrick Hoyle, uh, ST Boy 65. Ike's been picked as a member. Who else have they picked out here? Uh, Legend has been picked. Uh, Claudio uh, Cardellini. Sheriff has been picked. Who else are we seeing here? Splashnet has been picked as well. I think that's all of them. There we go. So if you've been randomly picked, you can do it. Now, if you, I know a lot of you like to super chat. If you want to gift any memberships out, please feel free to do that as well. Uh, we're going to keep gifting these out. We're going to set another one on the top six show later. We're going to set a limit. If we hit a thousand likes while we're live, I will gift another 20 memberships out. So you've got to make sure you're ready for these live shows to go out and go live. And I think it obviously gives it to people that are leaving lots of comments. So the more comments you leave, I think the more chance you've got of being uh, gifted um, uh, a membership for the Terrace. And we've got some great content coming up for you. We're relaunching the membership program at the start of the season. So stay with us. <laughs> Terry is slowly turning into a Man United toxic positivity fan like the Arsenal fans. <laughs> I love it. It's not true, but it's a good challenge. It's a good challenge, me old mucker. Not true, but there it is, because I still don't like my owners. I'm not going to start pretending that they're brilliant because of a, a few, a few good, a, a one or two good windows. Mo's on the show now. What are you saying, Mo, me old mate? How's it going, Terry? You all right? I'm good. Didn't I tell you to stay calm, my brother? <laughs> it's been a rough... I know you did, but I tell you, honestly, Saturday was very rough for me, man. I, uh, with the news of Cristiano... Um, it was tough, you know, mentally, you know, him wanting to leave and, the, you know, us not doing any transfer business or anything like that. And everyone jumping on the bandwagon where, you know, uh, saying that, oh, you know, everyone's having a rant. Even myself, Terry, I was having a rant as well because, you know, it's an emotional sport, Terry. You know, we, we're, you know, we get emotional. But this deal with Ericsson, I think it's a good deal. I've always been a fan of Christian Ericsson since Spurs days. Um, and I've just liked him as a player and I've always... You know, I'm, I've just been a fan of his and him to see 
him to come to my night. It's a good bit of business. I have to take my hat off. Look, I'm not taking my hat off to them, but I have to for this deal. But a lot more work to be lot more work to be done, Terry. You know, uh, we need to get that Dion deal. Um, a couple of more other signings. I know there's some more signings coming. I would love to have Anthony at the club, Terry. I, I really like him. Uh, if we could, if we could get Dion, Anthony, um, Martinez, and someone else, I think that would be a good, good transfer window. Also, about Cristiano, if Cristiano is to say with all the signings, I would make him the captain too. We need a new captain, man. Like I can't go another season with Harry Maguire as our captain. Like take the captaincy off him, please, and 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 just give it to Cristiano or give it to Bruno. I saw that video of Bruno when he came out. I was telling Tellers. And Fred off. <laughs> it was, that's what you call a captain, a, a leader. Um, a captain is someone where the youth look up to him, the players look up to look, look up to him. I don't want someone like Harry Maguire to be leading our uh, a team out next season. I'll back him as a defender, Terry, but just take the captaincy off him and give it to someone else. And 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 also, uh, yeah, I, yeah, that's, that's about, make Cristiano the captain. But I'm happy with the deal, Terry. It's, it's a start. It's a, it's a start, but, you know, let's not get giddy. A lot more work needs to be done by you. our football club. I hear you, Mo. Great call, my friend. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Terry. That, my guy. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Josh on the show. Me next. Long time no speak, my brother. How are you? Yo, what's up, Terry? And I just have to reiterate, everyone, stay calm. It's July, right? Because let's be honest, yeah. our players need that training right eric and hog players they don't they're already in modern shape it was our players who weren't in shape so that that's the first point and to erickson quality player you can kind of see what ten hog is doing now right like he's great at keeping it simple and moving the ball and everyone's talking about bruno we don't talk about bruno right bruno has no one to pass to who is also dynamic and and technical right so if you pass the ball and you just stay there kind of like mcsauce he has no place to pass the ball and move. If you remember Bruno's first game in January, he passed the ball and moved around like a bee and everyone else is standing around him. It's like Bruno's trying to do the whole whole thing. So to me, you're going to have players like De Jong and Erickson and even another attacking outlet who's di who's dynamic and Malassia, another great signing. He, a lot of these players are two-way players, which I appreciate. Listen, I, I totally agree. And, and listen, I, I think people are already starting to be negative. We have a super chat that came through here. I don't know who he's talking about here, but he says, um, uh, how comes we make two signings and people are even more negative? A certain Man United fan said the window is not impressive and not first choice signings. Well, I don't know where people get it. Like Christian Eriksen was one of the first linked players to us back in May when the manager joined. And I remember people, there were three we were looking at were De Jong. It was De Jong's name. It was... Um, Ericsson's name, and there was one other player who now eludes me. He was like a holding midfield player. It was a, a what's his name from French uh, Zakaria. Oh yeah, Zakaria. Yep. And he was like, oh that be that would be a good combination. So to act like Christian Ericsson wasn't a a, a, a a number one choice for Man United is an absolute lie. De Jong's a number one choice and is looking close. Lissandro Martinez, was he a number one option? Probably not. It was Urien Timber, but Urien Timber didn't say no because it's Man United. He said no because he didn't back himself to be able to get in front of Maguire. Why is that an L for Man United? That's on the player. Malassi is a player that the manager wanted at Ajax and has now brought him into this football club. Anthony is one of the key targets. The only player that we haven't got that was a key target was Darwin Nunes and Liverpool took him away. Like I said the other day, and I'll read my tweet out from the 25th of June. Every Man United, every player Man United sign uh, sign will be framed negatively as overpriced, here for the money, or did they really want to join? Every man, in, every player Man United are linked to um, that will not join jo join the club. It will be framed as Man United have lost their pool. Why didn't the club spend more money? And that's what's going on right now. Whatever we do, the fungus Man United fans will say it's a terrible job. Now, I'm all for calling out the Glazers, and the Glazers need to be called out. They need to keep spending. They need to, you know, they, they need to stop taking dividends, and I'll call them out on that. But I'm, I'm, I'm assessing what the recruitment team are doing and what Ten Hag are doing independently because they can only deal with the hand they're dealt with by the Glazers. If we think 
them not doing a good job. This is the way the, the people are very clever in how they spin it. They don't spin it with, oh, this is awful because the Glazers need to give us 100 million more. It's we're doing awful business with what we've been with, with the budgets that we've got. That isn't attacking the Glazers. That's attacking the people doing their jobs. And they're right. very clever in how they do it because they don't specify what they mean. I'm against the Glazers. I won't pump a penny into this club. I think they're atrocious owners. But we've got a budget of about 150 million that could rise to near 200 if we make the right sales. Of the money we've spent so far on the players we're targeting, considering the position that we're in, we've done a very good job so far. And another one of their myths that's been blown out of the water today is we can't work on more than one deal at once. Well, the fact that we've got two deals completing at the same time, Martinez is moving into its final stages between Man United and Arsenal, and De Jong that appeared very close. That's literally the embodiment of more than one deal at once. These guys, are, they just annoy me with their negativity. But again, like I've said for years, it's the only way people listen to them and follow them is when they're being negative because right i get it in the comments here from that listen i love the rivals on the terrace terry you're just propping the club you're chatting <laughs> BS, da, 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 da. and it's sort of like well, hang on a minute like you lot this is what i mean by twerking for rivals what the rivals want me to say is i'm not happy it's shit we should be spending more but i don't believe that i think ericsson's a brilliant signing what's your take on martinez and de jong do you feel like the club will be able to pull that off josh de jong I still believe so because we all understand Barcelona is a very political institution. So we, we understand they have to say certain things in public. And I think De Jong is uh, being being a great uh, uh, servant to Barcelona and doing the same thing. So I think he's also playing the political game as well. So I think once it gets more over the line, then I think he'll he'll be more uh, outwardly receptive to to our club. I just think it's it's uh, all marketing and politics. But at the same time, I definitely think we can get Martinez. He, he personally isn't my first choice. I would prefer someone like a Pau Torres because I can see City going for him next year or even going as well. But I, I would uh, prefer, you know, Ten Hag to get his people because he trusts them. It's kind of like I, I, I look at this whole Ten Hag uh, revolution, revolution as like scuba diving, right? Because our players are drowning out there. They don't know how to play the modern game. They, it, we, all, we all see it, right? With Ten Hag and his players and his coaching staff, they're essentially the scuba dive, scuba dive masters, and they're slowly teaching our players how to how to swim and knowing what to do. So I, I think, as Leah says, so shout out to Leah, you can't cheat the process, right? So that that's part of the process. And getting these players in, like Erickson and De Young and Martinez, who can all be versatile and play a certain way, I think is fantastic. Appreciate that, my, my guy, Josh. Great call as ever, my friend. And we'll speak again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, thank, sir, you. thank you. Thank you. Listen, viewers, we're back for the top six show, 6 p.m. today. Unless there's more breaking news in between then, we'll, we'll, we'll be back later on today for you to delve into this in more detail. David Butler here says, Terry is a great politician. He's a master of spin. I mean that as a compliment. But it's not spin, bro. It's just an opinion. I'm an, it's an absolute opinion. I said I'm going to give this new recruitment team, new coaching staff, new manager time been impressed with what they've done so far. I didn't have the expectation that we were going to go into this window and be able to spend like peak Man United when we we're winning trebles. It's not spin, it's the truth. But at the same time, I can praise something Myrtle does. I can praise something Ericsson does whilst criticizing the Glazers. The two things are, they, they, they can be mutually exclusive of one another. It's not about spin. It's about the absolute truth. But thank you very much for your comment, David. I will take it as a compliment as well, by the way. But there we go. Do me a big, big favor and smash that like button before you leave. The top six, biggest show on the terrace, back at six, more transfer stories. We're obviously going to have big big Ericsson, big Gabriel Jesus and um, uh, Phillips debates today. All those deals are now confirmed. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless. See you all.